Hello everybody, welcome back. My name is Colin, and welcome back to me. Uh, I'm not going to get into it, but uh, at least in this episode. But I've been away for about four years since the last time I made a gaming video, and I'm really looking forward to being back, so I'm glad you're here with me. Um, without further ado, we're just going to get into it. We're going to be playing Factorio in this series. And Factorio is a game and basically in which you're an industrial engineer. So you've got all these little factories that you make, you, get, you gather resources, uh, you sort them out into different production pipelines, you make more and more increasingly complex products with them, and all at the same time you fight off baddies that you know get attracted to your pollution, and it's just been really fun, super addicting so far, super addicting. So I've been playing uh, for about the past week with a good friend of mine, Calvin, on a multiplayer server that we rented. Uh, but I thought it'd be good just for the intro. What we're going to do is we're going to start up a new map in single player. And I'm just going to show you the basics of what's going on. Because we've gone a little bit farther in our multiplayer server, which is where I'm going to be playing predominantly for these videos. And uh, I thought it'd just be good just to you know, give you a little bit of tour of the basics of the game if you haven't seen it before. If you have seen it, uh, then you know you can just continue on in the next episode. There probably won't be much here that you don't know already. So... Without further ado, let's do it. I'm just going to do just basic, regular, uh, regular game. Nothing, nothing changed. All right, tips and tricks. Okay, like it says, this is the Factorio Free Play. Your task is to launch a rocket into space. Do this by constructing a rocket silo and launching a rocket with satellites. You'll need to re research advanced technologies in order to unlock the rocket silo. Start small, work your way up with automation, and don't forget to protect yourself from the natives. And let's do it. Okay, so you just start out. A little guy running around. And it's got a pretty wide field of view. And that'll come into play a little bit later because uh, there's a lot that's going to be going on in this. So you can see that we start out with two items down here in our quick bar, and we start out with a gun and a couple magazines. So uh, what do we have? We have a burner mining drill, and we have a stone furnace. Now the first time I played this, I, I, I still haven't looked at many guides or how-tos. This is the kind of game where the fun of it is learning how to do it, and then learning how to do it a little bit better, and then you know increasing your prowess. So that's what we're going to do here. Uh, right over here we've got the mini-map, and you can see it gives us a little bit of information what's going on around here. So we got some stone, copper, iron, and coal. Now this coal is kind of far away-ish, you know, for a beginning startup. So I see coal and iron down here. I bet there's going to be some copper and stone down here. So I might just run down there real quick and, uh, and see what we can do. So I'm going to run around and find a good place to just immediately start. Well, that's, that's, this is a good start. Instant fail. Uh, all this stuff is in the middle of a forest. So we're just going to run right back up to where we were and just start there. Reset. All right, we're back up top. And lo and behold, this little coal deposit, which we're going to need a lot of, is in a forest. So we're just going to chop these down. I hope that the volume is not too crazy with the gain. It sounds a little loud. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to turn that down just a little bit real quick. Alright, so this is going to be a little boring, and it's nighttime, and I can't tell how much you can see. I think we got this handy dandy headlamp. So yeah, I'm going to clear out some of these trees, and we'll bring it right back. Alright, pro tip number one, you start out with enough iron plate uh, and wood to make yourself uh, an iron axe. And so one of the interesting things about this game is... You can see this takes three iron plates, this iron axe, uh, and two iron sticks, but I don't have iron sticks. But what it'll do is it will make iron sticks out of an iron plate. So anything you have, it, it'll you don't have to make each little piece. The game is smart enough, or nice enough, I guess, to make everything for you if you have enough resources in total. So we're getting an iron axe. It's going to greatly speed up this uh, chopping procedure. All right, that should be fine for now. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get this burner going. And you can see that little yellow arrow. That's the direction of its output. So I'm going to plop it right here. You can see over on the right-hand side, it says expected resources 2.7 thousand. And as you move it further back into the deposit, it gets a little larger. But for, for our purposes, 2.7 will be fine. Now it's got this caution, no fuel thing. So what the burner mining drill needs, it needs to burn coal to mine whatever it's going to get. So we need some coal for it to work. So we can just get some of that manually. should do for now. Put that in there. And I'm going to make a wooden chest just so that it has something to output into. Alright, so that's set up for now. I'm just going to leave that be for a second. Run over here to this iron deposit I saw and get some of that. So I'd, I'd say iron and coal are your two most prominent, most needed uh, items in the game. So we're just going to hack away at this iron for a second so we can make another burner mining drill. And I can't remember for the life of me how much I need to do any of this stuff. So let's take a look. Let's see. So we need three iron gear wheels, one stone furnace, and three iron plates to make the, the uh, burner mining drill. So the iron gear wheels, each one of them needs two iron plates. So, I need to cook some of this iron. So, <laughs> I'm going to put this here. And you can see that one piece of coal looks like it's going to get us most of the way through this little stack of iron that I got. So we got our iron plates. Now we just need another stone furnace, which means we need some stone. It's a little little laborious here at the beginning. Um, when I when I first started playing, I kind of I had this like initial trepidation that all I would be doing would be running around and resource gathering. Um, and that's just not the case. This is just the hurdle you got to get over at the very beginning, and it's really not that bad. So I'm gonna get. 15 of these so I can have three stone furnaces. Actually, I'm going to get 20. How about that? Take a little sip of coffee. And there we go. Alright, so I'm going to make one drill, one more furnace, and go over here and get some coal. All right, so we got a good stack of coal now. And what I'm going to do is split. Oh, th this is one thing I don't like. You can't like double split stacks, if, if you know what I mean. Because you can't just put a half stack somewhere. It automatically stacks. Maybe there's an option. I haven't looked into it that far. It's not that annoying, but it's a little, a little trying. Okay, I'll get back over this iron, and we're going to throw down a new burner drill. Now, if I can't remember exactly, because I haven't played the beginning in a little while. Uh, but we're going to throw some of the coal into here. And so it's just going to keep mining. So I think... Yeah, it's automatically outputting into the burner. So all I need to do is fuel this burner, and it's going to keep making iron plates while our fuel is going to last. <clears throat> so the first thing you would think is say, hey, I don't want to just run over here and run coal over here every time. So we're gonna we're gonna automate this process a little bit, which is the name of the game. Not literally, of course. So without further ado, get these iron plates, and then you see this transport belt. It's the number one item in the game, in my opinion. Um, it's, you 
pretty much do everything with transports belt. Tra ooh, transport belts. Mm. I'm gonna get have to get my elocution back. It's been a while since I've talked on camera. Yes, yeah, so we're just gonna let this roll for a second. I'm just gonna gather some resources and I'll bring you right back. All right, we're back. Uh, as you can see, I've added on another little iron burner. I added one into the copper, and I added another one over here at the coal. Okay, but I'm tired of running back and forth just to keep these machines running. Because if you can see over there, the these have run out of coal. Now I got plenty of coal on me, but I don't want to worry about that yet. I don't want to run it over there. We're going to make a automated pipeline. So I've built a bunch of these transport belts. You, you're going to use up thousands of them in this game. Um, and here's how this will go. I'm going to break these chests. And the cool thing about that is that it gives you all the items inside. And if you can see, it's popped out a little piece of coal on the ground because it was done extracting it. And now it won't extra extract anymore because there's nowhere else for it to put a piece of coal. So we're going to give it a place. And thinking about this, what I want to do obviously is take a, a line that will transport this coal over to the iron. And I also want one that will go to the copper. But since these are burner mining drills, these also run out of fuel. So wouldn't it be nice if they would just fuel themselves? Well, this is how we're going to do that. So this is placing the transport belt. And again, you don't have to worry about placing it wrong. Because you can just pick it right back up. No worries. No loss. Uh, the only thing that I've discovered that you lose is if you have, when you're dealing with fluids later, uh, if you if you pick up a pipe or a storage tank or something like that, it doesn't give you the fluid because you can't hold the fluid, which makes sense. Here's what we're going to do. You hit R to rotate, and I'm going to start it like this. I'm going to have it go down. And you can see it's already putting the coal on the uh, on the track. Okay, so we're going to turn this because my, my idea here is that we're going to have the, the burners fuel the... Uh, the burners themselves. I mean, I'm sorry. The burners will fuel the their their. Ugh. Take three. The burners will fuel themselves with the coal that they produce. Hey, nailed it. All right. So, I'm I'm hitting R again just to turn the track, um, and it knows that we kind of want to turn. So we're gonna put it up like this, and then I've got these two items in my inventory, which are burner inserters. So you can see. They've got this this uh, line on one side, arrow on the other. Of course, they're going to pull from the line, put it in the arrow. Uh, these are also an integral part of the game. We'll do that. Let's see, that guy's already fueling this guy. It's going to start up. Now, this one hasn't been able to grab any yet because they're all down here. But he'll snag one as we go by. Easy peasy, right? Okay. He's got enough to go. All right, so we're going to bring it over this way quite a bit. I hope I made enough. I hope I have enough. Now, once you once you get more... Willy-nilly there. Once you get a little bit more adept at the mechanics of the game, you can start to like pre-plan things a little bit more. You know, you kind of fall into your style of how you're going to set up all these production lines. And... Um, you know, I've got one myself. I've got a little style. But, uh, uh, sorry, I'm thinking about it as I talk. Uh, but in the beginning, you kind of just, I mean, honestly, you just kind of do it wrong. And it's its prohibitively expensive to, you know, to, to do it right, even if you know. Because um, you never know how much you're going to expand, and you never know how much you're going to need or want. All right, so we're going to bring this coal around the backside of these uh, these miners. So, I'm just going to keep going through here. And I'm going to need some more iron from here, Ooh, which I already took. So, I am going to do what I said I wasn't going to do and fuel these guys up. Just because I'm going to need more iron. Always more iron. Alright, while that rolls, I'm going to, I guess, talk a little bit. Um, so, yeah, I, I had to get copper. Because one of the items that we need, um, and these these four crafting pipelines, you got logistics, production, 
intermediate products, which are like the things that you use to make further things. And then uh, combat, which, you know, this will all fill in with, you know, this has got armor, radar, which can't use radar yet because we don't have power. Um, and you can't get power strictly from, um, you know, just just the setup that we have now. Uh, i got to do a few more things. Um, but these intermediate products, these uh, electronic circuits are super important. You'll use them for a lot of things. One of the things you're going to use them for is an inserter, which... Uh, is like the burner inserter that we used up there, but it's used for everything. And it'll pull from one side and give it to the other. So it looks like what we're running out of, uh, if, you, if you can see our total raw for producing one inserter is uh, four plates of iron, which we don't have. Uh, so we're gonna go over here and grab some. And we're gonna make two of these guys, actually three all day. I don't know if I, I work in a kitchen. And so, you know, people say all together, all told. Um, but when we're calling tickets on the line, like, you know, whatever it is, I need three 14s and two stuffed mushrooms or whatever it is, all the, all day. Which means, like, that's the in total amount of what you need. I don't know why we say it. I don't know why it's the day. But everybody says it in the restaurant industry. All right, let's extend this track. And I want to think about, uh, just real quick, where this needs to go. I want It needs to be on the back side of these, uh, of these uh, burners. And it needs to be one away, so there can be an inserter in between them. And I want to think about where I'm going to put more of these in the future. So for right now, I'm going to actually turn it right here. Okay, come around the bottom. This is a little sloppy, but it will work. All right, we'll just stop there for now. All right, we need two more burner inserters. We don't have to use the burner inserters, but they're a little cheaper just to use for burners, obviously. So let's make two of those. Actually, it'll be three all day. We need two right now, but we'll need one more later. And just like, again, I've got the bar and the arrow. Oh, oh, there it is. That's, that's the newbie and me. Those are the regular inserters, which they need power, which we don't have yet. But we will soon. Oh, did I just do that again? I sure did. Well, good start. There we go. Okay, now you notice that the actual burner, so this is something I did explain. This is pulling the raw ore, right? So, oh, I don't have an axe on me. Well, I'm just doing well here. Okay, so it pulls in the iron ore, and uh, and then outputs it into the burner. And the, the furnace makes an iron plate out of it, which is like the first basic item of iron. So that's what's happening there. Um, but these themselves take coal, and I don't necessarily want to just always fuel them myself. So, what I'm going to do, I think, oh, I wish I had uh, one more level of research, I'm going to have to do that first. But for now, I'm just going to go and fuel that guy manually, we're going to keep these on manual fuel, it's not too bad. Because that all this stuff piling up here, obviously we don't need all this, it's nice that it's in the production pipeline, but uh, you can just walk by and hit F pick up things off the ground and now I just picked up you know 30 or so coal um, the only reason you'd have to worry about doing that is if you're gonna starve your your production pipeline down the line okay so let's get a few more iron plates always 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 need them and let's make some more of that okay so I don't have this part that they call a splitter right now. But um, I think this will be an experiment for the both of us um, that it might automatically turn. Mm. No, it won't. Okay. Okay. Well, we'll have to wait on that one. So, what I would have to do is make another line coming off of these, which is just a little impractical. So copper, you're just going to get fueled by hand for now. 
And of course you're out of coal again too. Alright, so what we need to do is start coming up in the technology world. So we need to research. You can see it says up here in the top right, press T to start. So, these guys in yellow are the ones that are available to you to research. And you'll notice they have these little like potions uh, looking things, these little beakers down at the bottom. And all these are red, and this one's red with green. And what that means is that if I click on like automation, uh, which will give me these two items, the assembling machine and the long-handed inserter, or this guy, which is logistics, and it'll give me an underground belt, the, the ability to craft this in the future. Underground belt, a fast inserter, and a splitter. And the splitter is what we want for now. So it's going to take 20 science packs. So what does that mean? Well, we go into our inventory and crafting screen. And intermediate project products. Um, so here it is, science pack number one. Now these are super slow to craft by hand. Uh, I immediately, when I was doing this the first time, made a production pipeline to make these. Um, but to do that, we've actually got to research a couple different items. So I think I'm going to crush through that real quick. Do, I'm going to do two things of research. Uh, basically, I'm just waiting and getting enough uh, product to get this done and waiting for all these little science packs to crack. So we're going to do the logistics and the automation, the, the first two basic things. And then I will bring you back. Okay, no. No, no, no. I lied. I lied. So <laughs> I haven't done this in a while, like I said. So it's actually going to take something a little bit different. So we're going to have to set up a power source. And... Uh, in the early game, you get steam engines to provide power. So we're going to do that all right here. I'm going to need a bunch more iron. And I think I'm okay on copper for the moment. Okay, so here we go. In your production pipeline, there's a boiler, which we're going to need. It takes a stone furnace and four pipes. And like I said, I haven't made any pipes. But the pipe just takes an iron plate, and the game will make all those for the boiler, and then make the boiler. Then we've got the steam engine, and we've got an offshore pump. Now, tantalizingly, we've got an electric mining drill, which will go faster and be more efficient, and not use coal directly, which is important for us right now. And then, finally, we've got the research lab, which, that's what I was going to do, was start the research, but I forgot that the research lab takes power, and so we're going to need power for the research lab. You can see how complicated it's going to get already. So let's start. Okay, so we're going to need water to boil into steam to run the steam engine to get power. So we need an offshore pump, we need a boiler, and we need a steam engine. Ooh, steam engine. Oof. Cannot talk. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to get more iron. Because I just want to go ahead and get two steam engines. Because there's a very specific ratio. Uh, and efficiency between a boiler and the steam engines and the offshore pump. I can't remember what it is, but the basic version of it, it's not the most efficient. The basic ratio would be one boiler to two steam engines, if I'm not mistaken. So here's what we're going to do. We are going to put down an offshore pump. Right there will be fine. And then... Uh, so this quick bar, just a quick tip, this quick bar is split on two sides. This side, uh, you, you still 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, but this is shipped 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we're going to put the boiler down. I can never remember the correct orientation. I want to say it's like that. No. Oh, I can't remember. Well, we'll figure it out here. We'll figure it out together. So it needs some coal. I know that. And then we actually don't need any pipe because it can just hook directly into the steam engine. I just can't remember if it's hooked up correctly. So you can see it's this is pulling in water, fine. This is boiling water, fine, because the temperature is at 165 degrees Celsius, which is way past boiling. Um, but these are not consuming fluid. So let's figure out why that is. I want to say it has something to do with the orientation here. 
so it doesn't need to be like that. I don't think so, but I can't remember. Okay, perhaps there does need to be a pipe in, the, in between. Let's, let's figure if that's the case. So there's a pipe. And I really do just love the fact that you don't have to, uh, you don't, there's no penalty for moving things around. Because that's the point of the game, is to make like more and more efficient systems. And if they penalize you for your mistakes, it would just be, oh, it would just be hard to deal with. Okay, I'm, I don't know what I did last time. I'm getting confused now. Let's try this one. <laughs> I can't believe this. I've, I've done this a few times now. I just cannot get it rolling. Nope, boiler's not, not doing it. Yeah, so it's not taking input from that side. It is taking input from that side. So, what am I missing here? What am I doing wrong? This is making for bad TV here. All right, let's see. I'm gonna get a couple power poles rolling. Let's just see if I need to like plop one of those. That wouldn't make sense, but nope, nope. Not getting it. Not doing it right. I don't know why. See, yeah, well, water in there. And it is not hot, so it's not outputting the steam. It comes from that one. I know it does. So here's what we're going to do. I think I got it. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to edit some of this out, I think. All right, let's give the coal again. And just to test, let's put down the pipe. The pipe is not containing any steam. Why? Oh yeah, I'm at a loss, guys. This is this is crazy. Oh. Well. Well. I honestly don't know what I'm doing wrong. All right, well, I'm going to probably cut this all the way out. <laughs> all right, well, that was just a whole bunch of fail. I just tried to set up this little steam engine thing that I was just talking about. I'm going to cut this in somehow. Um, and basically I just spent like five minutes on camera not saying much and just completely failing to set this up correctly and then I finally realized my mistakes. So, without further ado, let's do this. So we've got our offshore pump, got to stick it in the water, and it always leans over, you know, it always touches the shoreline. So that's valid right there. And then we need the boiler. And the boiler outputs from this middle section right here. So we're going to give it some coal. Oops. Grab some coal off the line. So it burns the coal to make the power. And I'm already doing this wrong again. <laughs> Alright. So, here's a helpful hint. You press uh, Alt, and it shows you the inputs and outputs of things. So I'm going to set this like this. Give it some power, and you see it's got, I can take water, or output water, on either side, and the steam comes out of the central trunk here. So, I pop down my steam engines, and that should be it. I don't quite understand why they're not rolling yet, because this should be going. At a loss. Alright, so maybe I do have to have a pipe in the middle of these things. Let's try that one more time, and hopefully no more fails. Alright, pipe of water, and it also shows you what's what's where, so that alt is a big help for troubleshooting. Alright, so, we got that. Alright, so it's burning. Alright, so it's got steam. 
Let's get one more pipe going on. Now I think I can daisy chain the, um, yep, see there's steam in there. I can daisy chain the steam engines, I think. I don't think I have to have a pipe in between. All right. All right, I think, I think it's rolling. Oops, okay, so these power lines can only go so far before the wire disconnects. So here we go. Now, I'm going to build, yeah, two research labs. And I don't know if you've noticed yet, but down here in the corner, see it's making everything it needs. Which, these are fairly expensive. So while that's rolling, you see the, the iron plates are in here. Grab the iron plates. Ah, here's a, a useful... Uh, function of the game. So these stone furnaces, right, uh, they only have a capacity of 100. And so once they hit 100, they stop. Uh, so in the early games, not, not a huge deal, but ideally what we would do is we would take some inserters, like so, and pull them out, and then put like a line up, so that, that we can put this onto a chest, or move it further into a production line. And the the iron will be right here. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the power line. Oh, see? Yep, yeah, it's not quite enough. It's okay. Alright, good. There we go. It just needed to actually be connected to something that was using power. And you see we got our iron blades right there. So, since I'm not going to set up a production line just yet, I'm going to put an inserter right here. And see, it's just going to put those on the ground, but we can just put a chest there. And now, now this is running steadily. We're, we're going to be always making um, iron plates as long as I keep putting coal in the furnaces, which for now is not too big of a deal. Later, what we'll do is we're going to have to retool this. We're going to have to have a way to put coal in here, which means we're going to have to separate from left to right these two things and put an insert, or you know, a, a belt with an inserter. In the middle of it super easy to do but uh, yeah all right so let's look at a few stats here so this is our electric network info and you can see that our it's it's slightly confusing in a way um, our satisfaction is complete so we're completely satisfying our power needs and our production is barely being used so you can think of the production as this entire bar is the total amount of power that we can produce. So right now we're only using about 20 kilowatts at our maximum second, you know. Um, and these are going to produce, uh, what, 1,800 kilowatts each? So 1.8 megawatts. So we'll have plenty of power for a while. Okay, so I made these research labs. And I'm just going to plop them down right here. So they both got power, and I'm going to put in some of the science, which I'm going to need more of, and I'm going to need to craft that. And then I'm going to start a new research. So we're going to do, um, I really think we should do logistics first, and that's going to start researching. So the more labs you have, uh, the faster the research is going to go. And if we look at our power grid again, you'll see that we're using a lot more power because the uh, these use about, I think, 60, yeah, 60 watts or kilowatts per, uh, per tick. So those are researching, and I think I've got enough material in there. I'm going to add just the rest of them. And I'm going to go pick up some iron plates from our chest, pick up some coal, And, of course, we're at 100 here, so I need to add an output for this, too. But our coal is rolling along, rolling along smoothly. It will just not stop until it uses up all the resources below it, basically. Or until this coal pipeline fills all the way up and there's no need for it to, you know, to produce any more coal. Alright, so that's it for this, like, little beginning intro thing. I'm not sure how long I've been doing this. I'm not sure what, what the time is on this little video. I'll try to cut it down a little bit. Uh, but I think you get the idea. Uh, I 
think I might do one more uh, little part of this intro video, which is just setting up a production pipeline for items. Um, and then after that, we'll jump back in to the, the world we have with Calvin and start doing some projects there. I'm working on an oil refinery system. So pretty excited about that. Glad you guys are here to watch it. I'm very glad I'm back. It has been a very long time, uh, but I'm pretty excited about it. So this is number one of what I hope will be many. And I want to say thanks for watching it, and I will see you guys next time.